John's oxidation is probably one of the most iconic oxidation reactions of alcohols. And depending on the structure of the starting alcohol, John's oxidation can yield either a carboxylic acid or a ketone. Hey everyone, Victor is here, your guide to all things organic chemistry, and in this video we'll take a deep dive into the classic oxidation reaction of alcohols. The traditional John's oxidation is a reaction of an alcohol with a mixture of chromium oxide, CrO3, and dilute sulfuric acid, H to SO4 in water acetone solvent mixture. And while this is a classic variation, there are some other versions that you may encounter in your course. For instance, some people like to perform this reaction with chromic acid or potassium bichromate in sulfuric acid. You can use whichever reagent you like most because all they do, they perform exactly the same function here. So for the rest of this tutorial, I'll be just using the classic version with the uh, chromium oxide and sulfuric acid. But remember that these reagents are interchangeable. As I've covered in my overview of the oxidation reactions video, the nature of the alcohol will influence the outcome of the oxidation reaction. Primary alcohols can give you either aldehydes or, if the reaction keeps going, they're going to give you carboxylic acids. John's oxidation is one of those reactions that keeps going, so while the aldehydes will be products in this reaction, they are going to be intermediates rather than final products. When it comes to the secondary alcohols, they are always going to give you ketones regardless of which oxidation method you are going to choose, so if you are doing the uh, John's oxidation of secondary alcohols, you are going to get ketones. One common mistakes I see many students make when they are working with this reaction, they add an extra carboxylic acid to molecule whenever they see the Jones oxidation conditions. Keep in mind that in this reaction we are oxidizing the carbons, the existing carbons in our molecule, so don't add extra carbons to your molecules. So, since we now know what to expect from our reaction, let's look at the actual mechanism of the reaction of the Jones oxidation. As the reaction is performed in the aqueous solution of chromium oxide and sulfuric acid, we'll start by reacting the alcohol with the protonated version of the chromium oxide. In the first step, oxygen of the alcohol attacks the chromium atom, forming a protonated intermediate. Then, after the proton transfer, in which we are going to use water as a base, we are going to end up with an intermediate where we have chromium sitting on the oxygen atom instead of the hydrogen that used to be there. Next, water comes into play again and deprotonates our alpha hydrogen, giving us the aldehyde as our product here. This is the redox step in this reaction. In this case, the oxidation state of carbon goes from negative 1 to a positive 1, and the oxidation state of chromium goes from positive 6 to positive 4. So carbon formally loses loses the electrons, while chromium gains those electrons. And since we are working in protic aqueous conditions, aka in the presence of acid, the aldehyde is going to get protonated and will quickly react with water. Then, after the intermediate loses the proton to the environment, we are going to get a hydrate, a molecule with the two OH groups on the same carbon. This is an equilibrium process, and the reaction can go back to the aldehyde form. But here is the catch, as soon as we form the hydrate, it can undergo another round of the oxidation, since the oxidizing agent is still floating around. So once our chromium catches the hydrate, the next round of oxidation begins. The mechanism in the nutshell is the same as in the first round. Here we are going to have an intermediate in which one of the OH groups will have the chromium bit hanging off it, and like in the first round, we are going to use water to facilitate the last step of the oxidation process, giving us the carboxylic acid. The oxidation step, however, is not an equilibrium process, so once we are at that stage of the carboxylic acid, there is no going back. And because of that, Jones oxidation always takes your starting primary alcohol all the way to the carboxylic acid and never yields an aldehyde as a final product. On top of that, if you have an aldehyde in your starting material, we are going to oxidize it in the process to the carboxylic acid as well, in addition to any alcohols that can undergo this oxidation too. So check your functional groups carefully. Throwing an aldehyde here or there onto your molecule is a very common trick some instructors like to employ, so don't get caught by that on the exam. Now, when it comes to the secondary alcohols, the reaction can only go through one round of oxidation. And yes, 
ketone, just like the aldehyde, can easily form a hydride here as well. However, since there is no hydrogen on the carbon with the OHs in this case, we cannot oxidize it any further, and so the molecule stays as, as a ketone without any further oxidation. Now, let's look at a few examples of the Jones oxidation. In the first example, I have a simple butane one all molecule as a starting material, and this one gets oxidized into the corresponding butanoic acid. This is a fairly straightforward example, so I don't expect you have any troubles with that one. In the next example, I have the phenolic OH and I also have the benzylic OH, the primary benzylic OH. Since the carbon on the OH on the aromatic ring doesn't have any hydrogens on it, this carbon cannot be oxidized any further, so we'll keep it as is. However, the primary alcohol here will be oxidized all the way to the carboxylic acid. In this example, we see the secondary and primary alcohol groups on the same molecule. Since both can undergo the oxidation, we'll end up with a ketone from the secondary alcohol and the carboxylic acid from the primary one. And finally, in this molecule, I have the secondary alcohol and tertiary alcohol groups. In this case, we'll keep the tertiary alcohol untouched since it cannot be oxidized any further, and our secondary alcohol will give us the corresponding ketone function group. Thank you for watching! I want to especially thank all of the Organic Chemistry Tutor members and my generous donors for your support in keeping this project going. You guys are awesome! If you have learned something new today, please give this video a like to help promote it and help more students see it. Leave me your questions and feedback in the comments below, subscribe for daily organic chemistry updates, watch this video next, and I will see you tomorrow!